Whenever you hear Super Mario Galaxy, you may think of its stellar soundtrack or the emptiness of space present throughout the game. However, one thing that may not come to mind when thinking about Super Mario Galaxy are the speedruns. Mario Galaxy seems to have a much smaller speedrun community, and since, well, since this is my favorite Mario game, I decided to start speedrunning it. And what I found, well, was more than I expected. This is the history of Super Mario Galaxy Any% Luigi World Records, and I'm doing this myself because I doubt Summoning Salt will do a video on this. This video will only cover the Luigi runs as they have more information and would overall be more interesting to talk about and learn about. Now, without further ado, let's talk speedrunning. The day is November 1st, 2007. Super Mario Galaxy has just been released, and the popular speedrun games at the time are games such as Super Mario 64 and the original Super Mario Brothers. In comparison to these games, Super Mario Galaxy is a very long game to speedrun, and there really aren't any game-breaking glitches that are possible to pull off in a real run. So before we get into any of these runs, let's talk about some of the variables needed to pull off a world record and some of the game's mechanics. In Super Mario Galaxy, Mario and Luigi have an ability called the Spin Attack. If you shake the Wii Remote, you can attack and stun the enemies. You can also spin in midair to get some extra height when jumping. Another factor speedruns have to take into consideration when running Super Mario Galaxy is the Star Bits. Star Bits randomly fall on planets in groups of three or more, and they can also be found in bushes and question mark blocks, and are also dropped by enemies when defeated with the Spin Attack. Star bits are especially important due to the fact that they are used to progress through levels by feeding Hungry Lumas, and are also used to unlock secret galaxies, also by feeding Hungry Lumas. Now, before we get too far, there are a few notable gameplay differences between Mario and Luigi that I should mention. The most obvious being that Luigi can jump higher and longer, but slides when coming to a stop, which forces the player to make tighter movements and pay extra attention to where Luigi will be landing after jumps, or when it comes to moving in general. Luigi also accelerates slower, loses air faster when swimming, and when spinning underwater, his air meter will decrease very quickly. Overall, Luigi has the movement advantage over Mario. However, he is often considered harder to play with, let alone speedrun with, due to his slippery movement and slower acceleration. It also takes more time to set up tricks and jumps, as well as to stop. Now with that out of the way, let's talk about the world records. The first recorded run was by Giselle in April of 2011. She completed her run with a time of 2 hours, 40 minutes, and 10 seconds, which is way faster than the top Mario run at the time, by over 20 minutes. But how was it that much faster? Well, not only does Luigi move faster, but he also skips the first cutscene at the beginning of the game, which improves the run by 4 minutes and 25 seconds. And since we don't have a video from the first documented Mario world record to use as a frame of reference for Giselle's run, we can only consume they played better and used better strats. Nearly three years had passed after all, so new strats were inevitably found over time. Giselle's run stood for 142 days until a runner known as Neg Taro snagged the world record. On August 28, 2011, Taro achieved a time of 2 hours, 37 minutes, and 44 seconds, improving Giselle's record by 2 minutes and 26 seconds. Although a lot of the earlier runs don't have any surviving videos, we can only assume that the runners found new strategies or simply outplayed the competition. This is Taro's only world record on the world record list. After this record, he would go on to set a string of world records in the Mario Any% category. This left Giselle to dominate the early Luigi Any% scene. 41 days after Neg Taro set his record, Giselle clapped back with a time of 2 hours 37 minutes and 33 seconds on the 8th of October. They lowered the world record by 11 seconds, and Giselle's record stood for 329 days until September 1st of 2012, when they beat their record again and lowered it by a full 2 minutes and 13 seconds. But before we talk about Giselle's run, let's take a moment to talk about the nunchuck spin. The 
When using Mario, you can spin the nunchuck to gain less height, which can allow the player to fall quicker and make more precise jumps. The nunchuck spin, as well as many other advanced techniques such as multiple frame perfect jumps, long jump chains, and camera or landing cancels, are a necessity when competing for a world record. But for Luigi, however, the controls are reversed. So instead of Luigi gaining more height when flicking the Wiimote, Luigi gains more height when flicking the nunchuck. So if you don't know about the difference, well, now you know. Drizelle's world record was done during an Awesome Games Done Quick livestream, which will give us a look at some of the strategies she used and how she pulled the run off. We will also use Joselle's run as a control variable to compare to all the other runs that we'll cover later on. So without further ado, let's begin. Joselle starts off Gateway Galaxy by collecting power stars as she follows the Star Bunny. As we mentioned before, star bits are very important in Super Mario Galaxy, even when speedrunning, and it is a necessity that you collect as many as you can while simultaneously not going out of your way to collect them and lose time. Gazelle ground pounds into the crater where the first star bunny is hiding, which allows them to descend faster and ultimately catch the bunny quicker. To aid in catching the star bunny, she shoots the star bit she collected at it, which slows it down. Catching the star bunnies isn't a simple task either. Drizel repeats this for the next two star bunnies and then moves on to the next part of the stage where you're constantly bombarded with meteors. She collects the star chips and then moves on to defeat the two Goombas who hold keys that allow them to move forward to the next section which is where the first grand star is being held. Another key thing to remember when speedrunning Super Mario Galaxy in general is to never talk to Lumos when you don't have to or even if you have the chance to avoid them. They honestly waste your time and often aren't very important to the run. Joselle moves on to Good Egg 1. They swiftly make their way through the first portion of the level, where she pulls off the first real skip of the run. Trust all the runners and crew artists, pro and plushy makers, metalsmiths, commentators, technicians, and everyone else involved. You are all amazing people. Okay, here we just completely skip the bean stalk to get to this part of the road. Giselle completely skips the vine, which saves about 3 to 5 seconds. She triple jumps starting at the curve of the planet and then making the third jump off of this stone platform here. They then spin at the height of the third jump to get pulled in by the gravity from the next planet above. They long jump across the back side of the planet and then backflip onto the rock generator. She backflips again to get pulled in by the gravity from the next planet and then ground pounds to get pulled in faster. This trick skips the entire flip switch portion of the level. Luigi also has an easier time pulling these tricks off than Mario does, due to his higher jump. However, Mario can still do these skips, it's just going to be more difficult. Drizel moves on to beat Dino Piranha, and in Good Egg 2, she performs the Pulse Star skip. By approaching this Luma without triggering his text boxes, line Luigi up roughly here. Backflip, and when Luigi is lined up with the Luma, do a homing ground pound. This will cause you to gain enough momentum to reach the launch star. This skips having to talk to the blue Loma, as well as navigating the pull stars. The next level is Good Egg 3, King Caliente's Battle Fleet. This star is actually optional, as well as loop de loop and it takes roughly the same amount of time to complete. There really aren't any major skips to go over in the rest of this level, so let's just move on to the next galaxy in the terrace, Honey Hive. Honey Hive 1 isn't necessarily difficult in any way, but the skip that it contains may be the hardest skip in the whole speedrun, the tree skip. Let me just play the clip. Hello, Cool Dave. Do donated $20 to a pacifist cathedral run in Sirius Sam. That's so strange. Now, that trick is one that they fixed in Mario Galaxy 2, being able to run on slopes like that. You're not supposed to be able to. Run. Oh, yeah. So actually, just getting up here is a bunch of shortcuts. This is, this, yeah, this is one of the hardest tricks in my run. The camera is just terrible for this. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. oh, wow. Yeah. Very nice. First time, wow. Yeah, that's a really you unhelpful that, camera you switching around. Easy. I can only get that in like maybe one in 20 times. Just Very the way nice. the camera angle Very switches, nice. like when you're in midair, it makes it almost yeah. impossible to grab the other side. So, what did we just see? When Joselle first enters the galaxy, she performs a slope long jump, and then triple jumps up behind the waterfall. Then backflips to get on top of the waterfall, and then backflips, spins, and does a continued series of spins and jumps, known as the slope climb. 
She's able to do this due to the same physics glitch in the slope trick. She slides down the side of the tree, wall jumps off the side of the next tree, and then spins to get on top of said tree where the power star is. She continues to spin and jump backwards towards the star. She does this all on their first try too, and considering the camera positioning and the technique required to perform this skip correctly, it's pretty impressive. In Honey Hive 2, the route doesn't differ at all, except Drizelle spins up to the tower on the first tree instead of going to the second tree. In Big Bad Bugaboom, Drizelle has a little bit of trouble in the final phase of the boss, but manages to defeat him fairly quickly and doesn't lose too much time. On the boss stage in the terrace, Megalig's Moon, Drizelle triple jumps off of the tall platform and skips using the bullet bill to access the launch star. She defeats Megalig very swiftly, and that about covers it for the terrace. Now, onto the fountain. Starting in Space Junk Galaxy, Joselle completes the first star, Pulse Star Path with ease, and performs the shortcuts very well. In Space Junk 2, she gets to the boss fight very fast, but explains that they didn't skip defeating the enemies on the airship before the boss fight because it is very risky. So, you, so it's possible to skip defeating these guys, but it's really hard. Yeah, it's, it's quite risky because these guys actually shoot with random timing. So, yeah. She beats Kamala with ease and moves on to Space Junk 3. She skips having to travel through the glass planet. As soon as she lands, she spins and is sucked into the launch star below. This is possible because the game thinks that you're in range of the launch star and when you spin, you can actually activate it and move on. The rest of the shortcuts are executed perfectly and Joselle defeats Terran Tox and collects the third star in the fountain. In Rolling Green Galaxy, Joselle skips having to roll down the first funnel by jumping off the edge here in between the Goombas and landing on the rail below. In Battle Rock 1, she skips having to collect the Pulse Star chips, and after she completes the Pulse Star Pass speedrun, Drizelle moves on to Bowser's Star Reactor, where you fight Bowser for the first time. Drizelle narrowly avoids the fire bars and goes on to fight Bowser. She cancels Bowser's shockwaves, which denies Bowser from delaying the fight. If you go straight up and attack him, you will cancel Bowser's attack, and he will ground pound into the lava earlier, instead of creating said shockwaves and slowing down your run. Drizelle collects the third Grand Star and moves on to the Kitchen Dome. Starting in Beach Bowl 1, Drizelle pretty much skips the entire level by using Luigi's higher jump to her advantage. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Once again, basically skipping the entire level. <laughs> the next skip is located in Ghostly 1, where she clips through the bottom of the floor inside the top floor of the mansion using the momentum from the pull stars. To successfully perform the mansion clip, you must long jump off of the right of the platform that Luigi lands on after the launch star, while holding slightly down right on the control stick. Just when the pull star furthest to the right is about to go off screen, point the cursor at it and hold A to be pulled up towards the stage again. Keep holding the pull star and when Luigi bounces off the bottom of the ledge, let go and carry your momentum underneath the wall of the mansion. From here, you can use either of the pull stars. This all comes down to preference and where Luigi is positioned. Giselle then backtracks to the terrace to complete the Honey Hive Cosmic Clone Race. She gets the boost at the start of the race by holding Z and then pressing A right as the race begins. Moving back to Ghostly Galaxy, Giselle dies for the first time on the Seeker Star, but it, d it doesn't slow them down too much, as she performs this ridiculous skip right here. And that, you usually just bear with me. Alright. Alright, there's a pretty ridiculous skip that I'm gonna try here. Uh, I'm not sure how to get it. Oh. Alright, Russ Lewis, want to buy swag? Yes. Very nice. Very cool, very cool. Thank you very much, Russell. Yeah, so basically those those walls yeah, are funny there. there. It's, it's funny that the floors don't exist, but the walls do. Yeah. <laughs> in Bubble Breeze, she performs the skip that passes over the entire second portion. And in Bowser Jr.'s airship armada, she skips the second ship by shooting out of the cannon all the way to the right. She then goes on to grab the fourth Grand Star very swiftly and moves on to the bedroom. Because she has enough stars, Joselle skips Gusty Garden Galaxy and goes straight to Freeze Flame Galaxy. The next skip we'll look at, however, is in Freeze Flame 2. Joselle uses the momentum from Luigi spazzing out when he's on fire to boost towards the final area and skips virtually the entire level. In order to pull this off, you have to grab the Life Up Mushroom at the stairway to get on the other side of the planet, otherwise you will die from the lava. Joselle collects a star and moves on to the third star and beats it with ease. Unlike me. Two thousand.
thousand years later. He backtracks after that to collect the secret star in Freeze Flame 1. She uses the slope trick to cheese their way up to the sling star that takes you to the second portion of the level. She climbs very quickly up the final mountain and collects the secret star. She then backtracks to Gusty Garden Galaxy where she picks up every star including the Daredevil Comet. Then they backtrack again to Bowie Base Galaxy to get a few more stars. She goes back to Battle Rock to get the green star from Luigi. And then they go on to beat Hurry Scurry Galaxy and then Slingpaw Galaxy which is one of my personal least favorite galaxies in Honey Climb before moving on to Bowser's Dark Matter Plan. Giselle speeds through the level and counters Bowser's spin attack by using their own spin attack. She quickly collects the Grand Star and moves on from the bedroom and into the engine room. Starting in Gold Leaf Galaxy, Giselle swiftly collects the three stars as well as the Cosmic Comet and then the Seeker Star by using small shortcuts to save a lot of time in the end. They move on to Toy Time Galaxy next and gets the first, secret, second, and fast Faux Comet stars before moving on to Sea Slide. She completes going after Guppy and faster than a speeding penguin, and then gets to the power star in Drip Drop Galaxy. The final star she collects before the final level is the Luigi Seeker Star in Honey Hive. Once in Bowser's Galaxy Reactor, Dozel triple jumps onto the side of the wall at the beginning of the level. She skips two of the planets entirely, and long jumps their way across the cylinder lava section. Drizelle quickly defeats Bowser by intentionally getting hit to stop Bowser's rolling attack in the final phase. Just nice deflection. Wait. Anything else still like Yeah, I'm good to go. Kill Bowser, but then he get, comes back to life or something. So when he picks this up, you ready? Um, uh, no, not yet. Just just wait until the end of this star cutscene. Okay. End of the cutscene? Oh, crap. <laughs> um, um, you hit reset, didn't you? Yes. Oh. What was it? It was two thirty-five twenty when he actually touched the star. Oh, wow. Now, what did you say impressive. your personal record was? Two thirty-five fourteen. Wow. Wow. That is including the. That is including the rest of that scene, right? Actually, when I timed to two thirty-five fourteen, I actually uh, started from the start of movement, but this time it started from the file select. So that's actually like. 30 seconds difference. Nice. So wow. this one is actually a bit faster. Wow. Oh, nice. nice. Oh, there we go. And that's all of Dozel's run. Now we can get to the other runs, but we would have to wait a while. Dozel's world record stood for 941 days until a runner who has a pretty strong reputation went for the world record in the any percent Luigi category. That runner was Kaorea. Kaiorea's first record was set on March 31st, 2015, with a time of 2 hours, 34 minutes, and 13 seconds. He improved Roselle's record by 1 minute and 7 seconds, and 217 days later, on the 3rd of November, he lowered his previous time by another minute and 50 seconds. Let's take a look at his best time. Kaiorea starts off by quickly hitting the bunnies with star bits, and then simply jumping up to Rosalina. Once in the Grand Star Room, he skips having to talk to the Luma. If you talk to the Luma, then you lose around 10 to 15 seconds depending on what version you're playing on. When exiting the pipe, there's a 4 frame window when you land that you can jump out of, but you have to jump as soon as you land on the floor. Once Kaiorea performs the skip, he makes his way around the inside of the room turning off all of the flip switches and collects the Grand Star. On Good Egg 1 and 2, he takes roughly the same route that Joselle took, but he doesn't do Good Egg 3, and instead moves on to Honey Hive 1. Kaiorea successfully performs the tree skip, and in Honey Hive 2, he also pulls off the tower climb, same as Joselle. Kaiorea's Honey Hive 3, however, was a lot faster and cleaner than Joselle's was. The next star Kaiorea collected was Loop-de-Loop, -loop, but since Joselle didn't do this star, we'll skip to Mega Leg. Kaiorea's Mega Leg and Space Junk 1 and 2 were much faster than Joselle's. He misses the rolling green skip once, however, but manages to get it on his second try. His entire battle rock was virtually the exact same as Joselle's, but on Bowser's Star Reactor, he misses the skip in the beginning a couple times. This skip is known as the Death Warp. 
by positioning yourself where the floor textures meet. You can backflip while having Luigi face in the direction of the fire bar and spin at the highest point of his jump. When you touch the death plane, you will respawn at the thwomp. Throughout the rest of the level, Kyrie cleans it up and improves his previous split by 7 seconds. Now we move on to the kitchen. In Beach Bowl 1, Kyrie essentially skips the entire level by backflipping off of this tree to the grassy platform and then performing a triple jump to get on top of the platform where the star is located, essentially the same as Joselle. In Beach Bowl 2, he quickly collects the golden shell to grab the star. In Beach Bowl 3, Kyrie long jumps across the Cyclone planet to swiftly nab the star. <laughs> yeah, I really hope for that. So go. That was that was that was so extremely weird. I've never seen. In a Beach Bowl secret, instead of using the Cataquack to hit the mystery coin to spawn the Ice Flower, he triple jumps and then spins at the peak of the third jump to save a little bit of time. Kyrea manages to pull off this small trick on their second attempt, and when scaling the waterfalls, they use a series of backflips to gain extra height and to climb the waterfalls quicker. Kyrie ultimately grabs the star by triple jumping while skating and then landing on the ice wall of the star platform. They then backflip and spin to grab the star without the use of the cataquack. Moving on to Ghostly Galaxy, Kyrie grabs the rainbow star to not only move faster but also smash through the rolling chain shaman to immediately kill the boo that has the key. They also use the remaining time they have with the rainbow star to collect the star chips faster. Kyrea also uses the same mansion clip skip that Giselle used to get to Luigi quicker, and to get the star. Kyrea then moves back to Sweet Sweet Galaxy to get that star real quick, and then gets the star from Luigi on the roof. Going back to Honey Hive Galaxy, they also collect the Cosmic Comet star by sliding down the wall above the star area, and then wall jumping and spinning to avoid falling into the black hole. This skips almost the entire race. Kyrie then completes the fast foe comet in Beach Bowl before going to Bubble Breeze, and they use the same method that Drizelle used to skip the second portion of the level. In Ghostly Secret, Kyrie fumbles a little with the auto-scroller skip that Drizelle also used, but picks up the pace and collects the star. In Bowser Jr's airship armada, Kyrie's route is the same as Drizelle's. He goes on to defeat Bowser Jr and collects the fourth grand star. Before moving on to the bedroom though, Kyrie completes the Battle Rock Comet, Hurry Scurry Galaxy, and collects the first green star, Luigi under the satellite. They have a little trouble with the bullet bills, but free Luigi with the second bullet. The next big skip is located in Bowie Base. When on the top of the main tower, Kyrie uses the green top man to bounce up towards what is referred to as the Pokeball Planet, as it resembles a Pokeball. At the height of the bounce, they spin, and the gravity from said Pokeball Planet pulls Kyrie onto it, where he goes on to collect the star. Once in the bedroom, Kyrie collects all five stars in Gusty Garden, minus the purple comet, and moves on to Freeze Flame, where their route is very similar to Joselle's. They triple jump onto the platform where the Sling Star is at the start of the level, and proceed to defeat Baron Burr with ease. Kyrie wins the Cosmic Clone Race in Freeze Flame, and in Freeze Flame 2, they skip having to grab the Fire Flower by long jumping into the gravity from the ceiling. Once on the ceiling, Kyrie long jumps to get pulled in by the gravity from the star area, similar to Joselle's run, just a little slower, by about 0.6 seconds. Kyrie completes Freeze Flame 3, and in Freeze Flame Secret, they use the same route that Giselle took. Heading over to Bowser's Dark Matter Plant, Kyrie swiftly moves through the level and uses the changes in gravity to their advantage, and defeats Bowser quickly by using the same method that Giselle used to stop Bowser from delaying the fight. After collecting the fifth Grand Star, Kyrie moves on to the engine room. Cause where the hell else would you go? Once in Gold Leaf, Kyrie takes roughly the same route that Giselle took, and in Gold Leaf 2, he triple jumps off the second planet to get pulled in by the gravity from the wooden planet with the Cataquacks. From there, they triple jump to get the Bee Mushroom, and then work their way around the planet to go straight to the flower platform with the star. In Gold Leaf 3, Kyrie has some trouble when climbing the tower, but successfully skips having to use the Bee Mushroom on their third attempt, and goes on to collect the star with minor trouble from the Underground Gunner. Kyrie completes the Secret and Cosmic Comet stars in Gold Leaf with ease, and moves on to Sea Slide. Sea Slide 1 turns out to be a breeze, with the Cosmic Comet, and faster than a speeding penguin being no different. Going into toy time, Kyrie has some trouble pulling off the armpit skip. If you don't know what that is, let me explain. By making your way to the right elbow of the mech, and waiting until the mech is at its highest point, you can backflip, then spin, 
and then wall jump, and then spin again to get on top of the screw. Then repeat backflips plus wall jumps and spins to make it on top of the head. Nonetheless, Kyrea performs the armpit skip correctly on their second attempt and collects the star. Toy Time Secret is completed with relative ease, as well as the fast foes of Toy Time and Toy Time 2. Kyrea goes back to complete Drip Drop Galaxy before collecting the Honey Hive Luigi star, the last star before traveling to Bowser's Galaxy Generator. In Bowser's Galaxy Generator, Kyrea takes almost the exact same route that Giselle took and defeats Bowser even quicker. The level was just cleaner. And I think that statement sums up Kyrea's entire run. It was cleaner than every world record Luigi run before it, and it had very minor changes in the route up to this point. Kyrea optimized this route as much as they possibly could, and it paid off. But 123 days later, Valu entered the ring with a time of 2 hours 31 minutes and 19 seconds on March 5th, 2016. Valu lowered Kyrea's time by 1 minute and 4 seconds. Valu is a very experienced Mario Galaxy player and speedrunner so it's only fitting that he would be the one to take the crown and world record title from Kyrea. Let's take a look at his run. Valo has a very clean gateway and successfully performs the Luma Skip. Before we move on, however, I think it's time to talk about an exploit that is critical when going for a world record. In Super Mario Galaxy, Mario and Luigi will perform an animation when landing after traveling in a launch star. This may not seem like much, but adding up all the animations can lead to a significant loss of time. In order to bypass the animation, simply pressing up and down on the d-pad or up and down on the right stick if playing on 3D All-Stars will cancel the animation and save about half a second on average. In places where it is impossible to cancel the animation, for example the start of each level, you can press A on the exact frame that you land. This will cause Mario or Luigi to immediately jump and skip the animation, saving about one second. And since this is a frame perfect jump, it will require practice to get it down and you won't always be able to perform a frame perfect jump. For example, at the start of Good A1, Valu doesn't skip the animation. Whether he was trying to or not, this is an example of how much time can be lost by simply entering a stage. Getting back to the run, Valu misses the gravity skip, but doesn't lose too much time since he takes the vine instead. During the fight against Dino Piranha, Valu shoots some of his star bits at Dino Piranha just before the final hit to slow them down, which can be slightly faster. In Honey Hive 1, Valu has a minor slip up, but doesn't cost too much time. And on Honey Hive 2, he takes the exact same route that Giselle took, which is actually slightly slower than the route that Kyrea took. And in Honey Hive 3, he has a little trouble with Bugaboom. But Valu quickly recovers and defeats the boss. Let's skip ahead to Space Junk 1. Space Junk 1 hides a ridiculous skip that saves a big chunk of time. Like I mentioned before, Super Mario Galaxy features switches and gravity that can be used to the player's advantage. Most spherical planets located in the game have an invisible field of gravity, and if Mario or Luigi enters this invisible plane, they will be pulled toward the planet. In Space Junk 1, there are pull stars all throughout the stage, and they can be used to gather tons of momentum and send Luigi flying. Hey guys, it's, uh, it's me here from the future. So I had a really hard time trying to explain this skip, and so I've decided to just link a video by Pods Dragon in the description, um, basically explaining this skip in full detail and a lot better than I could. So, yeah, check the description for that, and uh, either come back to this video or watch that video after this one. But uh, <laughs> we're going to uh, move to the next part. <laughs> Valo successfully performs a skip and completes the level without any major setbacks. He has a less than ideal Battle Rock too, missing some of the cannon shots. Valley recovers nearly all of the lost time on Battle Rock 3 and moves on to the kitchen, where he breezes through Beach Bowl 1 and 2 with minor trouble with the shell in Beach Bowl Secret and some slip ups in Beach Bowl 3. In Ghostly 1, Valley misses the mansion clip first try, but recuperates and nails it on his second attempt. However, in Bubble Breeze, he misses the skip in the second portion of the level where you backflip onto the rocks to land on an invisible platform and then simply long jump your way over to the star area. And despite having a pretty good Ghostly Secret and an okay Bowser Jr. fight, Valu is almost a minute behind his personal best, so how does he recover all that lost time? By getting a crazy fast Daredevil comment in Battle Rock. Valu shaved off 43 seconds by simply playing very, very well. Going into the bedroom, however, the run becomes a slugfest between Valu and his chances to get the world record. But by the time he enters Free Slim Secret, Valu is ahead of his PB by 4 seconds. 
but Val had failed the gravity skip in Bowser's Dark Matter plan, so once again, he is behind by 23 seconds. And you may still be wondering how Valu got the world record. Well, Valu was using splits that equate to his personal best, as I sort of mentioned earlier. During the stream, Valu stated that the world record was actually 26 seconds worse than these splits, so as long as Valu had a time that was 25 seconds behind his PB or better, he would have the world record. So in actuality, Valu had stayed ahead of Kyrie for most of the run, and he would stay that way for the rest of the speedrun. Valu recovered big time in the latter half of toy time and was ahead of the world record by a whole minute after drip drop. Bowser's Galaxy Reactor went smoothly and Valu is now the world record holder of Super Mario Galaxy and E% Luigi. For 140 days, that is. Valu's run had its highs and lows, proving that there was definitely time to save. Enter the Sludgy Gamer, a runner who has solid experience in various Nintendo games. On July 23rd, 2016, Sludgy beat Valu by 11 seconds with a time of 2 hours, 31 minutes and 8 seconds. Sludgy had a pretty clean run with some minor hiccups in Ghostly Secret. Fuck. I'm not even going to try to go for it. I'll still say 5 seconds as long as I get the triple jump. Battle Rock 2. Oh man. That was going to be so cool. And a handful of other galaxies. But towards the end of the run, Sludgy cleaned it up and beat his PB by a minute and 48 seconds. Despite this, however, Valo came back just three days later and lowered Sludgy's world record by 2 minutes and 20 seconds. Sludgy and Valo continued to trade the world record back and forth throughout the rest of 2017 and into March of 2018, lowering the world record by a few seconds or even a minute in some cases. And it was during this period that Sludgy found a new skip in Space Junk 1, appropriately named Sludgy Hop. This triple jump skips having to free the Toad Brigade from the crystals. In a normal playthrough, you would have to break the crystals, and then Captain Toad would fly down on the Star Shroom, allowing Luigi to hop into the Sling Star. But this is what Sludgy found. In order to perform this strat, start the first jump in this red box, and then perform a double jump just below the red line. Make sure to get as close to the red line as possible without crossing it, and then press A for as short as possible during the second jump, and then hold neutral on the analog stick immediately after tapping A to perform the double jump. Just before pressing A to triple jump, start holding up left. You can also wait until just after the third jump to hold up left. If you want, you can spam A on the third jump to make sure you don't fail the triple jump, which is what I do. During the triple jump, angle yourself towards the sling star. If the setup is perfect, you will go straight towards it. By late March of 2018, Sludgy had set a record that would stand for 167 days. But on September 9th, Hardcore Gaming set his first Luigi 80% world record. Let's get one thing straight. This man right here, he's an absolute beast. His speedrun experience is just as impressive as Valu's, and it shows. Hardcore lowered Sludgy's time by 6 seconds, and just 9 days later, Valu said, not today, it lowered the record again by 57 seconds. There's a little back and forth game played by Hardcore and Valu in the fall of 2018 until Hardcore just kind of left and ran away. He set a string of world records from November 2018 to November 2019. For a whole year, Hardcore was the king of Luigi Any%. Who would be the one to stop him? Mr. Cloud Kirby and Hardcore are pretty much equal in skill, and they were the only two people who were getting record after record in 2019 and 2020. Mr. Cloud Kirby's first world record in the Luigi Any% Percent scene was completed on December 22nd, 2019, just in time for Christmas. Just nine days later, however, Hardcore submitted a world record of his own, just in time for New Year's, beating Cloud Kirby by three seconds. Despite the small time difference, Hardcore would hold the record for an impressive 109 days, until April 18th, 2020. Mr. Cloud Kirby's time of 2.22.47 stood for two days until Hardcore came back yet again and one-upped Mr. Cloud Kirby with a 2.22.15. Hardcore would go on to lower the world record by 43 seconds 18 days later, and literally three hours after this run, Mr. Cloud Kirby just sort of popped off. Three hours is the shortest time between a world record and the Super Mario Galaxy speedrun scene, and Cloud Kirby's run was just the first of many to come throughout May of 2020. Day after day, Mr. Cloud Kirby lowered his PB again and again over the course of 13 days, ultimately lowering the world record by a collective 53 seconds. 
In under two weeks, four new records were set by the same player, and that is very, very impressive. Four days after the string of world records, Hardcore Gaming set a new world record yet again one-upping Mr. Cloud Kirby. By late May 2020, the world record was now down to a 220.35 by Hardcore. Sub-220 was entirely possible, as the run still had minimal room for improvement. But who was going to be the first one to get Sub-220? After 90 days in August, Valor returned with a time of 2 hours, 20 minutes, and 24 seconds. Valor was incredibly close to achieving a time below 2.20. The only slip-ups he had were failing a few jumps. This just goes to show that when you get really high up on the leaderboard when speedrunning any game, the runs have to be very close to perfection. In some cases, saving a few milliseconds matter when grinding for world record. And 8 days later, on my birthday, Mr. Cloud Kirby beat Valu by 9 seconds! The world record will only have to be lowered by another 15 seconds, and... Oh my god! 30 days after Mr. Cloud Kirby's incredibly close run of 2.20.01, however... No, okay. Oh my god. Okay, please don't backflip. <laughs> please don't backflip. <laughs> I'm free, dude. <laughs> He did it. Sub 220 had been conquered. Valor was the first to get sub 230, and now over five years later, Mr. Cloud Kirby had achieved sub 220. While the record had only been lowered by about 10 minutes in this five year span, the Luigi Any% category is the shortest improvement in any category across Galaxy 1 and 2. So in comparison to that, this was a pretty big deal. Now of course 219.58 isn't the perfect time. About a month later, after Mr. Cloud Kirby's record setting run, Valu snagged the world record by 56 seconds with a time of 219.02. This run stood at the top for 227 days until June of this year, when Mr. Cloud Kirby took the world record title back again with a time of 2 hours, 18 minutes, and 57 seconds. And 6 days later after that, on July 4th, achieved a time of 2 hours, 18 minutes, and 51 seconds. But the Luigi Any% Percent community wasn't going to let Mr. Cloud Kirby hold the record for long. On September 20th, Hardcore Gaming came back and lowered the world record by 20 seconds, and 10 days after Hardcore's run, a talented speedrunner by the name of Jay lowered Hardcore's time by 16 seconds, bringing the record to a very quick 218.15, which is where the record currently stands. However, other runners such as XZ Rockin, Tiber, and Dayton have all come within striking distance of Jay's record, so it's only a matter of time before the record is lowered again, and again, and again. So this begs the question. How low can the world record go? I asked the Super Mario Galaxy speedrun community for their thoughts on the hypothetical best time for Luigi Any% Percent. They said the following. For Luigi overall, the lowest it can possibly go is 2 hours, 13 minutes, and 43 seconds. But for Luigi 1 player only, it's 2 hours, 14 minutes, and 36 seconds. This changes basically every day. This is a good resource for a general idea of how low it is, but this sheet doesn't include strats that haven't been done in runs. 
For example, there's a buoy based one skip that skips using the torpedo TED, and instead uses the penguin to launch yourself to the platforms, but it hasn't been done in a run. If anything, TASSes are a better showcase of how far any given run can go. There's two Super Mario Galaxy 1 any percent TASSes in the works, one for Mario and one for Luigi. And as far as I remember, the Mario TASS has made more progress than the Luigi one. These TASSes will provide a lot of information regarding how low the Luigi any percent and Mario any percent world records can go. I will put a link in the description to a spreadsheet that shows the sum of the best times for each category. Will we ever see the world record get this low? Only time will tell. This video was one of the hardest I've ever had to make. Nine months in the making, and I finally finished. I cannot thank you enough for watching all the way through if you're seeing this right now. And a huge thank you to the Mario Galaxy speedrunning community for helping me out with a few tidbits. All the resources that I use will be linked in the description down below. The spreadsheets, the leaderboard, splits, etc. And I plan on making more videos covering Super Mario Galaxy 2 and the other categories that I didn't cover in this video. So if you don't want to miss those, like and subscribe if you want to. And I would really appreciate feedback on this video because this is like the first time that I've done a world record history video. Um, so I would really appreciate feedback. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.